Hello, everyone. My name is Arthur Lee. I'm a biostatistician working at City of Hope National Medical Center. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about SAS data step programming. The contents from this presentation is based on four chapters in Handbook of SAS Data Step Programming, which are the core components of the book. And I believe these are the core concepts to grasp if you want to be proficient in SAS programming language. These core components include understanding how the data step works, by group processing, writing loops, and array processing. In, in the first section, we will learn how the data step processes during the compilation and the execution phase. A common problem often facing beginning SAS programmers is that the SAS data set that they create is not what they intended to create. For example, there are more or less observations they intended, or the value of the newly created variable is not retained correctly. These types of mistakes occur because new programmers often focus exclusively on language syntax but fail to understand how the data step actually works. A data step is processed sequentially via the compilation and execution phases. In the compilation phase, each statement is scanned for syntax errors. If an error is found, SAS will stop processing. The execution phase only begins after the compilation phase ends. In the execution phase, the data step works like a loop, repetitively executing statements to read data values and creating observations one at a time. Each loop is called an iteration. We can refer to this type of loop as the implicit loop, which is different from the explicit loop by using the iterative do, do well, or do until statements. The SAS statements in the data step can, can be categorized as executable or declarative. The declarative statements are used to provide information to SAS and only take effects during the compilation phase. The declarative statements such as length, format, label, or drop statements can be placed in any order within the data step. On the other hand, the order in which executable statements appear in the data step matters greatly. Program 3.1 illustrates how data step processing works. These programs read raw data from the text file example, example 3 underscore 1 dot txt and creates one variable BMI. Example 3 underscore 1 dot txt contains two observations and three variables including name, height, and weight. Notice that the weight variable for the first observation is entered as 12D, which is a data entry error. Each variable in example 3 underscore 1 is occupied in the fixed field, and values for these variables are standard character or numerical values. Therefore, we can use column input method to read this data set. For example, program 3.1 reads this external file the program starts with the infile statement followed by the input statement. The infile statement is used to ident identify the location of the external file, and the input statement instructs SAS how to read each observation. Thus, we must place the infile statement before the input statement because SAS needs to know where to find the external file before it can read it. After that, we can calculate BMI variable by using the assignment statement. Next, let's talk about the data step compilation phase. Since we are reading a raw data file, the input buffer is created at the beginning of the compilation phase. The input buffer is used to hold raw data. However, if we read a SAS data set instead of a raw data file, the input buffer will not be created. SAS also creates the program data vector, or PDV, in the compilation phase. PDV is a memory area on your computer. 
and SAS uses PDV to build the new data set one observation at a time. Within the PDV, there are two automatic variables, underscore n underscore, and under error underscore. Under, under n underscore equaling 1 indicates the first observation is being processed, and underscore n underscore equaling 2 indicates the second observation is being processed, and so on. The automatic variable underscore error underscore is an indicator variable with values of 1 or 0. Under error underscore equaling 1 signals the data error of currently processed observations such as reading the data with an incorrect data type. During the compilation phase, SAS scans each statement in the data step. When it starts to scan the input statement, which is reading the name, height, and weight variables, SAS allocates one space for each of these variables in the PDV. When SAS scans the assignment statement, BMI is also added to the PDV. Some of the variables in the PDV are marked with D, which stands for dropped. The others are marked with K, which stands for kept. Only the, only the variables marked with K will be written to the output dataset. Automatic variables are always marked with D, so they are never written out. During the compilation phase, SAS checks for syntax errors such as invalid variable names, options, punctuations, misspelled keywords, etc. SAS also identifies the type and length of the newly created variables. At the end of compilation phase, the descriptor portion of the SAS dataset is created, which includes the dataset name, the number of observations, and the number, names, and attributes of variables. Once the compilation phase is completed and there is no syntax errors in the data step, SAS starts the execution phase. At the beginning of the execution phase, the automatic variable underscore n underscore is initialized to 1, and underscore error underscore is initialized to 0, since there is no data entry error yet. The non-automatic variables are set to missing. Next, the info statement identifies the location of the input file. The input statement copies the first data line into the input buffer. At this point, the input pointer points to the beginning of the input buffer. Then the input statement starts to read the read the data values from the input buffer according to the instructions from the input statement and write them to the PDV. The value for the name variable which is specified from column 1 to 7 is, is copied to the name slot in the PDV. Then the input pointer points at column 8. Next, SAS copies the values from column 9 to 10 from the input buffer to the height slot in the PDV. Then the input pointer points at column 11. The value for the weight variable is entered as 12D, which is an invalid numeric value. Therefore, the weight variable is set to missing. The underscore error underscore is set to 1 at this point. Meanwhile, an error message is sent to the SAS log indicating the location of the data error. At this point, the input pointer points to column 15. Next, the assignment statement is executed and BMI will remain missing since operations on a missing value will result a missing value. When the output statement is executed, only the values from PDV marked with K are copied as a single observation to the output data set EX3 underscore 1. Now the control reach, reaches the end of data step, there are two things happen automatically. First, SAS system returns to the beginning of the data step to begin the next iteration. Secondly, the values of the variable in the PDV are set to missing. The automatic variable underscore n underscore is incremented to 2, 
and the underscore error underscore is set to zero. During the second iteration of the data step execution, the second data line is read into the input buffer by the input statement. And the input statement correctly copies the contents from the input buffer to the PDV. BMI is correctly calculated. The output statement copies the contents from PDV to the output dataset. When the SAS system reaches the end of the data step, there are two things happens automatically again. The SAS system again returns to the beginning of the data step. The underscore and underscore variable is incremented to 3 and the rest of the non-automatic variable are set to missing. SAS attempts to read an observation from the input data set, but it reaches the end of our marker, which means that there are no more observations to read. When the end of file marker is encountered, SAS goes to the next data or proc step in the program. In the previous program, an explicit output statement is used to tell SAS to write the current observation from the PDV to a SAS dataset immediately at the point where you place the explicit output statement, but not at the end of the data step. If we remove the explicit output statement, every data step contains an implicit output at the end of the data step. The implicit output tells SAS to write observation to the output data set at the end of the data step. If you place an explicit output statement in the data step, the explicit output statement will override the implicit output statement. In other words, once an explicit output statement is used to write an observation to an output dataset, there is no longer an implicit output statement at the end of the data step. The SAS system adds an observation to the output dataset only when an explicit output statement is executed. Furthermore, more than one output statement in the data step can be used. We will see an example of using multiple output statements later in this chapter. Now let's talk about the differences between reading a raw dataset and reading a SAS dataset. Remember that when we read the raw data, the data was transferred to the input buffer first, then transferred to the PDV. And in the end, the data was copied from the PDV to the output dataset. But when we read a SAS dataset by using the set statement, there will be no more input buffer. Data from the input dataset will be copied directly to the PDV, and then the contents from PDV will be copied to the output dataset. There are also other differences. When creating a SAS dataset based on a raw dataset, SAS initializes each variable value in the PDV to missing at the beginning of each iteration of execution, except for the automatic variables, variables that are named in the return statement, variables that are created by the sum statement, data elements in the temporary array, and the variables created in the options of the file and in-file statement. But when SAS reads SAS dataset via the set statement, SAS sets each variable to missing in the PDV only before the first iteration of the execution. For variables that exist in both the input and output datasets, these variables will return their values in the PDV until they are replaced by the new values from the input dataset. For the newly created variables, which are not from the input dataset, SAS will set these newly created variables to missing in the PDV at the beginning of every iteration of the data step execution. For example, suppose that we are reading the SAS dataset example 1. At the beginning of the data step execution phase, SAS sets each non-automatic variables to missing in the PDV. Next, the set statement copies the first observation from the input data to the PDV. BMI is calculated. 
The output statement copies the contents from PDV to the output dataset. SAS reaches the end of the first iteration of the data step execution. Next, SAS returns to the beginning of the data step to begin the second iteration. At this point, underscore n underscore is incremented to two variables that exist in both the input and the output data, such as name, height, and weight, will return their values in the PDV. The newly created variable BMI is set to missing at this point. The set statement copies the second observation to the PDV. As you can see, the contents for the name, height, and weight variables are replaced with the new values from the second observation. Then BMI is calculated next. This is a very important concept that we need to understand before we can move further. In conclusion, only the newly created variables are set to missing at the beginning of the each iteration of the data step execution when we read a SAS dataset. Now let's see an example based on the dataset on this slide. There are only two variables, ID and score, in this data. Suppose we would like to create a new variable total that is used to accumulate the score variable. In order to create an accumulator variable total, we need to initialize total to zero at the first iteration of the execution. Then at each successive iteration of the execution, add a value from the score variable to the total variable. Since total is a new variable we want to create, total will be set to missing in the PDV at the beginning of every iteration of the execution. Thus, in order to accumulate the total variable, we need to retain the value of total at the beginning of each iteration of the, of the data step execution. In this situation, we need to use the return statement. The return statement will prevent the variable from being initialized each time the data step executes. In the return statement, variables is the name of the variable that we will want to retain. The value in the numerical value that is used to initialize the variable only at the first iteration of the data step execution. If we do not specify an initial value, the return value the return variable is initialized as missing before before the first execution of the data step. The program on this slide uses the return statement to create a total variable. Let's go over the execution phase of this program to better understand the return statement. The execution phase begins immediately after the complete completion of the compilation phase. At the beginning of the execution phase, underscore n underscore is set to 1 and error underscore is set to zero in the PDV. The variable ID and score are set to missing. The variable total is initialized to zero because of the return statement. If we don't use the return statement to initialize total to zero, total will be set to missing at the beginning of the ex execution phase. Next, the set statement copies the first observation from the data set SAS3 underscore 1 to the PDV. The return statement is a compile time only statement. It does not execute during the execution phase. Total is calculated. The data step execution reaches the end of the first iteration of data step. Since there, since there is no explicit output statement in this program, the implicit output statement at the end of data step tells the SAS system to write observation to the, set, to the output data set. The SAS system returns to the beginning of the data step to begin the second iteration. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 2. The variables that are read from the input dataset, including ID and score, return their values in the PDV.
the newly created variable total is also retained because the return statement is used. Without using the return statement, total will be set to missing at this point. Next, the set statement copies the second observation from the input data to the PDV. Total is calculated. The set system reaches the end of second iteration. The implicit output copies the content from PDV to the output data. SAS returns to the beginning of the data step to start the third iteration. Underscore n underscore is incremented to 3. ID and score are returned from the previous iteration because they are from the input data. Total is also, also retained because of the return statement. The set statement copied the third observation from the input data to the PDV. Total is again uh, calculated. The implicit output generates the last record for the output data. The sum statement is very similar to the return statement. In the sum statement, variable is the numeric accumulator variable that is to be created and is automatically set to zero at the beginning of the first iteration of the data step execution and is thus retained in the following iterations. Expression after the plus operator can be any SAS expression. In the situation where expression is evaluated to, a, to be a missing value, it is treated as zero. Therefore, the previous program can be rewritten by using the sum statement instead of using the return statement. By using the sum statement, total is initialized to zero at the beginning of the data step execution. Total also returns its value. At, at every iteration of the data step execution. Many applications require the data step to process only part of the observation that meet the condition of a specified expression. In this situation, we need to use the subsetting if statement. The expression in the subsetting if statement can be any valid SAS expression. If the expression is true for the observation, SAS continues to execute statements in the data step and includes the current observation in the data set. The resulting SAS data set contains a subset of the external file or SAS data set. If the expression is false, then no further statements are processed for that observation and SAS immediately returns to the beginning of next iteration of the data step, that is to say, the remaining program statements in the data step are not executed and the current observation is not written to the output data set. For example, program 3.5 creates a data set that contains the observation in which the score variable is not missing. Sometimes it is more efficient or easier to specify a condition for excluding observations instead of including observations in the output data set. In this situation, you can combine the if-then statement with the delete statement. Program 3.6 provides an alternative version of Program 3.5 by using if then and the delete statements. Sometimes we may want to know when reading the last observation from the input data set. We can create a temporary variable by using the end equal option in the set statement as a flag to signal when the last, obse last observation is being read. The variable after the keyword n echo is a temporary variable that contains an end of file indicator. The variable is initialized to zero at the beginning of the data step iteration and is set to one when the set statements reads the last observation from the input data. Since the variable is the temporary variable, it is not added to the output data set. Program 3.7 calculates the total score and lists the total number of observations from the dataset set 3 underscore 1. 
In this program, the temporary verb "last" is used to indicate when to read the last observation of the input data. The output data set only contains the last processed observation because of using the subsetting if statement in the program. Restructuring data is a common task for a SAS programmer. The purpose of transformation to different formats is to suit the data format requirements for different types of statistical procedures. This type of data transformation can be easily done by using more advanced programming techniques, such as array processing described in Chapter Six, or the transpose procedure described in Chapter Ten. However, this can also be accomplished without the advanced techniques for simple cases. Suppose that we are transforming the data from the wide format to the long format. Notice that data in the long format has a variable time that distinguishes the different measurements for each subject in the wide format. The, or the original variables in the wide format. S1 to S3 becomes the variable score in the long format. Since only two observations need to be read from the white dataset, there will be only two iterations for the data step processing. That means we need to generate the output up to three times for each iteration. In some iterations, the output might not be generated three times because the missing values in the variable S1. To S3 will not be outputted in the long dataset. Program on this slide illustrate the data transformation by using multiple output statements in one data step. Again, let's go through the data step execution phase of this program. At the beginning of the first iteration, underscore n underscore is initialized to one, and the rest of the variables are set to missing. The set statement copies the first observation from the input data to the PDV. The time variable is assigned with value one. The score variable is assigned with the value from the S1 variable, which is three. Since the score variable is not missing, SAS copies the variable that are marked with K from the PDV to the output data set. Notice that variable S1 to S3 are marked with D because these three variables are specified in the job equal data set option in the data statement. After the first observation is generated, the time variable is assigned with value two. The score variable is assigned with the value from the S2 variable. Since the score variable is not missing, the second record is generated from the output statement. The time variable is assigned with value three. The score variable is assigned with the value from the S3 variable. Since the score variable is not missing, the third record is generated from the output data set. Since we used the explicit output statement. There is no more implicit output statement. When SAS reached the end of the first iteration of the data step, we've already generated three records in the output data set. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to two. ID S1 to S3 variables are retained from the previous iteration. The newly created variable time and score are set to missing. The set statement copies the second observation from the input data to the PDV. Time is assigned with value one again. Score is assigned with the value from S1. Since score is not missing, the fourth observation is generated from the output statement. Time is assigned with the value two. Score is assigned with the value from S2. Since score variable contains the missing value, no output is generated from this statement. Time is assigned with value three, and score is assigned with the value from S3. Since score is not missing, then the fifth observation is generated.
Sass reaches the end of data step of the second iteration and returns returns the beginning of data step to start the third iteration. Since there is no more observation to read in the third iteration, SAS goes to the next data or proc step. In this chapter, we are going to learn about bigroup processing method. Understanding bigroup processing is also closely related to knowing how data step processes during the data step execution phase. The data set that were used in previous chapters only contain one observation or one measurement per subject. Sometimes we also work with data with multiple observations for each subject. This type of data often results from repeated measures for each subject and is often called longitudinal data. Applications that involve longitudinal data often require identifying the beginning or end of measurement for each subject. This can be accomplished by using the bigroup processing method. Bigroup processing is a method of processing records from dataset that can be grouped by the values of one or more common variables. These grouping variables are called the bivariable. The value of a bivariable is called the bivalue. A bi-group refers to all observations with the same bi-value. To utilize bi-group processing, we need to place a bi-statement with one or more bi-variables after the set statement. The input dataset also needs to be previously sorted by the same variable. During the bi-group processing, SAS creates two temporary indicator variables for each bi-variable, first dot variable and last dot variable. Since first dot variable and last dot variable are temporary variables, they are not sent to the output dataset. Both first dot variable and last dot variable are initialized to one at the beginning of the data step execution. Consider the SAS dataset on this slide, which consists of five observations with the values of score for two subjects, A01 and A02. Suppose that we use ID as the bi variable, then there will be two bi groups because there are two distinct values for the ID variable. Then first.id is set to 1 in the PDV when SAS reads the first observation in each bigroup and is set to 0 when reading the second to the last observation in each bigroup. Similarly, last.id is set to 1 when reading the last observation in each bigroup and set to 0 when reading those observations that are not last. When there are multiple variables designated as by variables, a by group will be a group of records with the same combination of the values of these by variable, with each by group containing a unique combination of values for the by variables. For example, if we use ID and score as the by variables, then in addition to first.id and last.id, first.score and last.score will be created in the PDV. There will be four by groups based on unique combination values of ID and score. Suppose that we would like to calculate the total scores for each subject based on the data set on this slide. To create a variable say total, that is the total score for each subject, we need to initialize total to zero when starting to read the first observation of each subject. Then total can be accumulated by adding the values from the score variable to total for each observation. In the end, we can output the total score when reading the last observation of each subject. Therefore, we need to utilize bigroup processing and use ID as the by variable. Program 4.1 calculates the total score for each subject. In this program, the, uh, the variable ID is used as the by variable. Therefore, this data set needs to be sorted first by the ID variable. When the first dot ID equals to 1, the variable total is initialized to 0. 
then total is accumulated with the value from the score variable by using the sum statement. Then subsetting if statement in the program is to control when to output the data, that is when the last dot ID equals to 1. To understand this program better, let's go through the contents in the PDV during the data step execution. At the beginning of the first iteration, underscore n underscore is initialized to 1. Since id is the by variable, two automatic variables first.id and last.id are created in the PDV. Both first.id and last.id are initialized to 1 before the first iteration of the data step execution. id and score variables are set to missing. Total is set to 0 since total is created by using the sum statement. When the set statement executes, SAS copies the first observation from the sorted SAS4 underscore 1 dataset to the PDV. Since this is the first observation for A01, first ID is set to 1. The last ID is set to 0 since this is not the last observation. The by statement is a declarative statement. It doesn't execute during the execution phase. Next, total is assigned to 0 because this is the first observation for ID A01. In the if then statement, I wrote if first.id, which is equivalent to writing if first.id equals to 1. The sum statement accumulates the total variable. The subsetting if statement is evaluated to be false because last.id does not equal to 1. SAS immediately returns to the beginning of the data step. That means that the contents of the PDV are not sent to the output dataset. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 2. Both first.id and last.id are retained because these are automatic variables. ID and score are retained because these two variables are from the input dataset. Lastly, total is also retained because total is created by using the sum statement. As you can see, all these variables in the PDV are retained their values at the beginning of the second iteration. However, the reasons for retaining the values are different. The set statement copies the second observation to the PDV. Since the second observation is not the first observation for A01, the first ID is set to 0. This is also not the last observation for A01. The last ID is also set to 0. Since first ID does not equal to 1, there is no execution for the if then statement. Total is accumulated with the value from the score variable. Since last ID does not equal to 1, in the subsetting if statement, SAS again returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the third iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 3. The rest of the variables are retained. The SAS statement copies the third observation from the input data to the PDV. The first ID is set to 0, since this is not the first observation for A01, but last ID is set to 1, since this is the last observation for A0. Since first ID does not equal to 1, there is no execution. Total is calculated. Since last ID equals to 1, which is true, SAS continues to execute the remaining statement in the data step. Remember that this is the rule for the subsetting if statement. Next, SAS reaches the end of the third iteration. The implicit output statement copies the contents from PDV to the output data. Then SAS returns to the beginning of the fourth iteration. At the beginning of the fourth iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 4. The rest of the variables are written. The set statement copies the fourth observation from the input data to the PDV. Since this is the first observation for A01, first.id is set to 1, but this is not the last observation for A01. 
the last dot id is set to 0. Since first dot id equals to 1, which is true, total is set to 0. As you can see, this is a very important step. Without initializing total to 0 when reading the first observation for each person, total will accumulate the values from the previous subject in the next step. Now, total is calculated. Since last ID does not equal to 1 the, in the subsetting if statement, SAS immediately returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the fifth iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 5. The rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copies the fifth observation from the input data to the PDV. First dot ID is set to 0 since this is not the first observation for A02, but last dot ID is set to 1 since this is the last observation for A02. Since first dot ID does not equal to 1, there is no execution. Total is accumulated. Since last dot ID equals to 1, SAS continues to execute the remaining statements in the data step. The implicit output copies the contents from PDV to the output dataset. SAS returns to the beginning of the data step to begin the sixth iteration. Since there is no more observations to read, SAS goes to the next data or proc step. Let's see another example. Suppose that we would like to calculate the mean score for each person based on the same dataset. The solution for this problem is similar to the previous program. We need to accumulate all the scores for each subject and create a counter variable n to count the number of observations within each by group. Both total and n need to be initialized to 0 when first ID equals to 1. Then we can calculate the mean score by dividing total by n and output the result when last ID equals to 1. A common task in examining a data set is checking when the data set contains duplicate observations. For example, the first two observations in this data set are identical. To identify duplicated observation, we can use the bigroup processing method. Suppose that we would like to create two data sets, one with observations with non-duplicated records and one containing observations with duplicated records. Since the duplicated records will have the same value for both the ID and score variables, both ID and score variables will be used as the by variables. A non-duplicated record is the one where both first.score and last.score equals to 1. Otherwise, it will be duplicated record. Based on this idea, we can write a program like the one on this slide. Patients with repeated measures over time are often encountered in the clinical field. For example, the dataset patient on this slide contains the triglycerides measurement and smoking status for patients for different time periods. Notice that some patients only have one measurement, whereas others were measured more than once in different years. Suppose that we would like to create a data set that contains the most recent non-missing data. The resulting data set will have three variables, which include patient ID, TGL new, which is the most recent non-missing TGL, and smoke new, which is the most recent non-missing smoke variable. A couple of issues need to be considered for solving this problem. First of all, the most recent non-missing data for TGL and smoke occur at different time points. For example, for patient A01, the most recent non-missing TGL is 150 in 2007, but the most recent non-missing smoke is Y in 2005. For A02, the most recent non-missing TGL is 210 in 2006, and the most recent non-missing smoke is N, uh, which is in 2006 also. Another issue is that some patients may only have missing values for either TGL or smoke. In this situation, we only need to use the missing, missing values 
uh, in the resulting data set for this variable. For example, TGL measurement is missing for A03. For A04, the most recent non-missing TGL is 190 in 2006, and the most recent non-missing smoke is N in 2007. For A05, since there is only one observation, we, we will take 180 from TGL and the missing value for the smoke variable. Since we only need to keep the most recent record, the data set has to be sorted by the patient ID and visit variable in ascending order. However, when utilizing bigroup processing in the data step, we only need to use patient ID as the by variable. One idea for solving this problem is that we initially assign TGL new and smoke new to missing values when reading the first observation for each patient from the sorted data. Then, at each iteration of the data step, we will assign the values from TGL and smoke new and smoke variables to TGL new and smoke new, respectively, provided that TGL and smoke are not missing. Since TGL new and smoke new are newly created variables, we need to return their values by using the return statement. In the end, we will output the values in the PDV when reading the last observation of each patient. The solution for this problem is illustrated on this slide. Let's go over the data step execution phase to understand this program better. At the beginning of the first iteration, underscore n underscore is set to 1. The set statement copies the first observation from the input data to the PDV. Since this is the, la this is the first observation for A01, first.pad ID is set to 1, but this is not the last observation for A01, last.pad ID is set to 0. Since first.pad ID equals to 1, both TGL new and smoke new are set to missing. Since TGL is missing, there is no execution. Since smoke is not missing, the value from the smoke variable is assigned to smoke new. Since the last dot ID does not equal to 1, SAS returns to the next iteration. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 2, the rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copies the second observation from the input data to the PDV. First dot pad ID is set to 0, since this is not the first observation for A01. Last dot pad ID is set to 1, since this is the last observation for A01. Since first dot pad ID does not equal to 1, there is no execution. The value from TGL is assigned to TGL new since TGL is not missing. Since smoke is missing, there is no execution. Since last of pet ID equals to 1 in the subsetting if statement, SAS continues to the next statement. SAS reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the variables that marked with K in the PDV to the output data set. Then SAS returns to the next iteration. At the beginning of the third iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 3. The rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copies the third observation to the PDV. Since this is the first observation for A02, first up pad ID is set to 1. Since this is not the last observation for A02, last up pad ID is set to 0. Since first up pad ID equals to 1, both TGL new and smoke new are set to missing. As you can see that this is an important step without initializing these two variables to missing when reading the first observation of each person. Both variables will contain the values from the previous person. Since TGL is missing, there is no execution. Smoke is also missing, there is no execution. Since last of pet ID equals to zero, which is false, SAS returns to the beginning of next iteration.
At the beginning of the fourth iteration, underscore and underscore is incremented to four. The rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copies the fourth observation to the PTV. Both first.pet ID and last.id are set to zero. Since first.pet ID does not equal to one, there is no execution. Since TGL is not missing, TGL is assigned to TGL new. Since smoke is not missing, smoke is assigned to smoke new. Since last.pet ID equals to zero, SAS returns to the next iteration. At the beginning of the fifth iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to five. The rest of the variable are retained. The set statement copied the fifth observation to the PDV. Since first.pet ID does not equal to one, there is no execution. Since TGL is not missing, TGL is assigned to TGL new to replace the old value. Since smoke is not missing, smoke new is also replaced with the value from the smoke variable. Since last.pet ID equals to one, SAS continues to execute the next statement. Now SAS reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the contents from PDB to the output data set. Now we have the second observation generated. I'm not going further for the rest of the iterations. I hope you understand this program clearly at this point. Restructuring dataset from the wide format to the long format was illustrated in chapter three. We can also transform the dataset from the long format to the wide format by using the by group processing method. Since we are reading five observations from the long dataset, but only creating two observations, it means that we are not copying data from the PDV to the final dataset at each iteration. As a matter of fact, we only need to generate one observation once all the observations for each subject have been processed. Therefore, we need to use the by group processing method by using ID as the by variable. We only need to output the data when the last uh, when last dot ID equals to one. We can use the multiple if then else statement to assign the value from the score variable to S1 to S3 variables. The newly created variable S1 to S3 in the final dataset need to be retained their value. Otherwise, S1 to S3 will be initialized to missing at the beginning of each iteration of the data step processing. Notice that subject A02 is missing one observation for time equaling two. The value of S2 from the previous subject, which is A01, will be copied to the data set white for the subject A02 instead of a missing value because S2 is being retained. To avoid this problem, we need to initialize S1 to S3 to missing when processing the first observation for each subject. Program 4.5 begins by sorting the long dataset by ID and time. Sorting the variable time within each ID is important because it ensures that the horizontal order of S1 to S3 in the white dataset for each subject can be matched correctly with the vertical order of the score the long data set. Let's go over the data step execution phase of this program. At the beginning of the first iter iteration, underscore and underscore is set to 1. Both first.id and last.id are set to 1. The rest of the variables are set to missing. The set statement copies the first observation to the PDV. First.id is set to 1 since this is the first observation for A01. Last.id is set to 0 since this is not the last observation for A01. Both buy and return statements are declarative statements. Since first.id equals to 1, S1 to S3 are set to missing. 
Since time equals to one, the value from the score variable, which is three, is assigned to S one. Since last dot ID does not equals to one, no further statements are processed. SAS returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to two. Both first dot ID and last dot ID return their values since they are automatic variables. ID, time, and score are also returned because they are from the input data. S1 to S3 are returned because they are uh, they are specified in the return statement. Otherwise, these three variables will be set to missing at this point. The set statement copies the second observation to the PDV. First dot ID is set to zero since this is not the first observation for A01. Last dot ID is also set to zero since this is not the last observation for A01. Since uh, since first dot ID does not equals to one, there is no execution. Since time equals to two, S2 is assigned with the value from the score variable. Since last dot ID does not equals to one, SAS returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the third iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to three. The rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copied the third observation to the PDV. First dot ID is set to zero, and last dot ID is set to one, since this is the last observation for A01. Since first dot ID does not equals to one, there is no execution. Since time equals to three, S three is assigned with the value from the score variable. Since last dot ID equals to one, SAS continues to execute the next statement. Now SAS reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the contents from PDV to the output data set. Then SAS returns to the beginning of the data step to begin the fourth iteration. At the beginning of the fourth iteration, underscore n underscore underscore is incremented to four. The rest of the variables are retained. The set statement copied the fourth ob uh, observation to the PDV. First dot ID is set to one since this is the first observation for A02. And the last dot ID is set to zero since this is not the last observation for A02. Since first dot ID equals to one, S1 to S3 are set to missing values. Since time equals to one, S1 is assigned with the value from the score variable. Since last dot ID does not equals to one, SAS returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the fifth observation, underscore n underscore is incremented to five. The rest of the variables are retained. The set uh, the set statement copy the fifth observation to the PDV. First dot ID is set to zero, and last dot ID is set to one. Since this is the last observation for A02, since first dot ID does not equals to one, there is no execution. Since time equals to three, S S three is assigned with the value from score. Since last dot ID equals to one, SAS continues to execute the next statement. SAS reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the value from PDV to the output data set. This is the end of this chapter. As you can see, that there are many applications that can that can utilize the bigroup processing method. In this chapter, we will talk about loop structure in the data step. A loop is a basic logical programming concept where one or more statements. Are executed repetitively until a predefined condition is satisfied. You probably learned the loop structure in other programming languages. Compared to other programming languages, loop processing is more complex in SAS because of its unique implicit loop. In addition to the implicit loop, there is an explicit loop structure that you can use in the data step.
There are three sections in this chapter. We only focus on section one, which is implicit and explicit loop. An implicit loop, which was introduced in chapter three, results when the data step repetitively reads data values from the input data set, executes statements, and creates observations for the output data set one at a time during the execution phase. SAS stops reading the input file when it reaches the end of file marker, which is located at the end of the input file. At this point, the, impl the implicit loop ends. Suppose that we would like to assign each patient in a group of uh, patients in the clinical trial where each patient has 50% of chance of receive, receiving either the drug or placebo. For illustration purposes, only four patients from the trial are used in this example. The data set is similar to the one on this slide. To assign a patient with either a drug or a placebo group, we can use the run unit function. The run unit function is used to generate a random number that follows uniform distribution between 0 and 1. The seed in the run unit function is a non-negative integer. The run unit function generates a stream of numbers based on seed. When seed is set to 0, which is the computer clock, the generated number cannot be reproduced. However, when seed is a non-zero integer, the generated number can be reproduced. The program on this slide reads data by using the set statement. Then the group variable is assigned with either D for drug or P for placebo based on the randomly generated number. Let's use this program on, on this slide to review the implicit loop. At the beginning of the data step execution, underscore n underscore is initialized to 1, underscore error underscore is set to 0, and the rest of the variables are set to missing. The set statement copies the first observation from the input data to the PDV. Run now is assigned with a value that is generated from the run unit function. Since the generated number is not greater than 0.5, the group variable is assigned with p. At the end of the data step, the implicit output copies the variables that are marked with k in the PDV to the output data set. Then SAS returns to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the second iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 2, id is retained since id is from the input data set, group and run num is set to missing. The set statement copies the second observation from the input data to the PDV. Let's skip a few iterations. Now at the end of the fourth iteration, the implicit output generates the fourth observation, since again begins to the beginning of the data step. At the beginning of the fifth iteration, underscore n underscore is incremented to 5. SAS reaches the end of file marker, which means that there are no more observations to read. The execution phase is completed, and SAS goes to the next data or proc step. In the previous example, the patient ID is stored in an input data set. Suppose that we don't have a data set containing patient's ID. We are asked to assign four patients with 50% of chance of, of receiving either the drug or placebo. Instead of creating an input data set that, that stores ID, we can create the ID and assign each ID to a group in the data step at the same time. Here's the program to assign each ID to a group in the data step without reading ID from the input data. In this program, we need to assign ID with ID values four times, then assigns the group value based on the generated number. There are four explicit output statements that tell SAS to write the current observation from the PDV to the SAS dataset immediately, not at the end of the data step. However, without using explicit output statement, 
you will only create one observation for ID equal M1240. Notice that most of the statements in this program are identical. To reduce the amount of coding, we can simply rewrite the program by placing repetitive statements in the do loop. In the iterative do loop, we must specify an index variable that contains the value of the current iteration. The loop will execute along value 1 to value n, and the values can be either character or numeric. Now we can rewrite the previous program by using an iterative do loop. We will use id as the index variable. These four id values are the value 1 to value 4 that need to be specified after the equal sign in the do, in the do statement. These four SAS statements are identical, which need to be placed within the loop. The program on the right side of the slide utilizes an iterative do loop to simplify the previous program. Most of the time, we use an iterative do loop to iterate along a sequence of integers. The loop will execute from the start value to the stop value. The optional by clause specifies an increment between start and stop. The default value for the increment is 1. Start, stop, and increment can be numbers, variables, or SAS expressions. These values are set upon entry into the do loop and cannot be modified during the processing of the do loop. However, the index variable can be changed within the loop. Suppose that we are using 1 to 4 as patient's ID. We can rewrite the previous program as the one on this slide. The program uses id as the index variable. The start value is 1 and the stop value is 4. We didn't, we didn't specify the increment value since the default value of, of 1 is used. Now let's go through the data step execution phase to understand this loop better. Since we didn't read any input data set, there will be only one iteration for the data step. Underscore and underscore will be one for the entire execution phase. At the beginning of the first iteration of the do loop, id is assigned with value 1. Runnum is generated. Since runnum is not greater than 0.5, group is assigned with p. The output statement copies the variables that mark marked with k in the PDV to the output dataset. Sass, SAS reach the end of do loop and return to the beginning of the do loop and start the next iteration. At the beginning of the second iteration, id is incremented to 2. Since 2 is less than or equal to 4, the second iteration continues. Runnum is generated again. Since runnum is greater than 0.5, group is assigned with value d. The output statement copies the contents from PDV to the output dataset. Let's skip two iterations. Here's the contents in the PDV at the end of the fourth iteration, and we have four observations generated. SAS returns to the beginning of the loop and starts the next iteration. At the beginning of the fifth iteration, ID is incremented to 5. Since 5 is greater than 4, the loop ends. There will be no implicit output since the explicit output statement is used in the data step. Since we didn't read any input data set, the data step execution ends at this point. Using an iterated do loop requires that we specify the number of iterations for the do loop. Sometimes, we will need to execute statements repetitively until a condition is met. In this situation, we need to use either the do well or do until statements. The do well loop, the expression is evaluated at the top of the do loop. The do loop will not execute if the expression is evaluated to be false.
Now we can rewrite the previous program by using the do while loop. In the do while loop, we need to specify a condition to control when the loop will stop. In this program, we compare id variable with value 4 as the conditions for stopping the loop. id variable is created by using the sum statement within the loop. Again, let's go through the data step execution phase. At the beginning of the data step execution, underscore and underscore is initialized to 1. ID is set to 0 because ID is created by using the sum statement. The rest of the variables are set to missing. Since ID is 0, which is less than 4, the loop continues. ID is incremented to 1. Runnum is generated. Since runnum is less than 0.5, the group variable is assigned with value p. The output statement copies the variables that are marked with k in the PDB to the output dataset. Sass reaches the end of the do while well loop and returns to the beginning of the loop and starts the next iteration. Since id equals to 1, which is less than 4, the loop continues. ID is incremented to 2. Let's skip a few iterations. Here's the contents of the PDV at the end of the fourth iteration. At this point, ID equals to 4. There are four observations being generated. SAS returns to the beginning of the loop to begin the fifth iteration. However, ID is not less than 4. The loop stops. SAS reach, reaches the end of the data step, the execution phase ends. We can also use the doUntil loop to execute the statements conditionally. Unlike do while well loop, the doUntil loop evaluates the condition at the end of the loop. The doUntil loop will not continue for another iteration if the expression is evaluated to be true at the end of the current loop. That means the do until loop always executes at least once. Now we rewrite the program again by using the do until loop. Let's compare the differences between using the do while loop and the do until loop. When using the do while loop, the loop will not continue if the expression is evaluated to be false. The condition of the expression is evaluated at the top of the loop. On the other hand, the condition of the expression is evaluated at the bottom of the do until loop. The loop will not continue for another iteration if the expression is evaluated to be true. A common application for using loops is placing a loop within another loop. To continue with the previous example, Suppose that we would like to assign 12 patients from three cancer centers, COH, UCLA, or USC, with four subjects per center, where each patient has a 50% chance of receiving, receiving either the drug or placebo. A nested loop can be used to solve this problem. In the outer loop, the index variable center is assigned with the values with the name of the three cancer centers. For each iteration of the outer loop, there is an inner loop that is used to assign each patient to a group. Since the outer loop iterates three times and an inner loop iterates four times, placing the output statement inside the inner loop will generate 12 observations. In the previous example, all the observations were created from one data step since the data step didn't read any input data. The center variable gets its value from an outer loop. Sometimes it is necessary to use an explicit loop to create multiple observations for each observation that is read from an input data set. For example, suppose the value for center are stored in the SAS data set. For each center, you need to assign four patients with, uh, where each patient has a 50% of chance of receiving the drug or placebo.
In this situation, we need to read in the value for the center variable via the implicit loop. Then for each center that is being read into the PDB, we need to utilize an explicit loop to create the ID and group variables. If you are interested in learning more examples on explicit loops, you can read Chapter 5 in Handbook of SAS Data Step Programming. Utilizing an explicit loop is commonly used together with uh, array processing, which we will learn in the next section. In this chapter, we are going to learn about array processing. This is also the last section of this seminar. The example on this slide illustrates a situation for utilizing array processing. The dataset SBP contains six measurements of systolic blood pressure measurements. The missing values are coded as 999. Suppose that we would like to recode 999 to the standard numeric missing value. We can write a code like the one in program 6.1. In this program, each of the if statements converts the number 999 to a SAS missing value. These if statements are almost identical. Only the names of the variables are different. In this situation, we might think to use a do loop to simplify this program. Remember the program in the previous chapter. We have four almost identical blocks in the program. The only difference is the value of the ID variable. Then we can simplify the program by enclosing the identical statements within a do loop. The do loop iterates along the values of the ID variable. However, in this program, the difference of these six statements is the variable names instead of the values of a single variable. If these six variables can be grouped into one single unit, we can loop along these variables. This is the concept of array processing in SAS. An array is a temporary grouping of SAS variables. To group a list of variables into an array, we need to use the array statement. The array name in the array statement does not become part of the output data. The array name must be a legitimate SAS name and cannot be the name of a SAS variable in the same data step. Furthermore, array name cannot be used in the label, format, drop, keep, or length statements. The subscript component in the array statement describes the number or arrangement of array elements and can be specified in different forms. The simple form for subscript is to specify dimensional size of the array. The optional dollar sign indicates that the, uh, the elements in the array are character elements. You do need to specify the dollar sign if the array element have been previously defined as character elements. If the length of array elements have not been previously specified, you can use the length option in the array statement. The optional array elements are the variables to be included in the array, which must be either all numeric or character variables. For example, we use the array statement to group SBP1 to SBP6 variables. We can also provide a range of numbers as subscript by providing the lower and upper bounds of the array and separate them by a column. An asterisk can also be used as subscript. Using an asterisk will let SAS determine the subscript by counting the variables in the array. When we specify the asterisk, we must include array elements. We can enclose subscript with braces, brackets, or parentheses. If array elements are not specified, the array elements will be implied to the variables with the names that contain the array name and the numbers from 1 to n. For example, the first array statement on this slide is equivalent to the second one. There are a couple of situations for omitting the array elements 
The first situation is that SBP1 to SBP6 variables were already exist in the data step. In the second situation, if SBP1 to SBP6 variable do not exist, they will be created by using this array statement. Other ways to list array elements is to use the keywords underscore, numeric underscore, underscore, character underscore, underscore, o underscore, which are used to specify all numeric, all character, or all the variables in the data step. If the keyword underscore o underscore is used, all the previously defined variables must have the same type. We can also assign initial values to the array elements when creating a group of variables by using the array statement. When any or all elements in the array are assigned with initial values, all elements in the array will act as they are named in the retain statement. For example, the first array statement creates n1, n2, and n3 data step variables by using the array statement and initialize them with the values 1, 2, and 3, respectively. The second array statement creates care1, care2, and care3 variables assigned with the values of a, b, and c. The dollar sign is necessary because care1, care2, and care3 are not previously defined in the data step. We can also use the keyword underscore temporary underscore as array element to create temporary array. Using a temporary array is useful when you want to create an array only for computing purposes. When referring to a temporary data element, we, ref we refer to it by the array name and its dimension. Since a temporary array only contains constants as element, they cannot, they cannot be sent to variables as the output data set. Also, the values in temporary arrays are automatically retained without being reset to missing at the beginning of each iteration of the data step execution. Furthermore, we cannot use asterisk with temporary arrays. After an array is defined, we can reference an array element in the data step. The subscript component is used to specify the subscript of an array. The subscript must be within the lower and upper bounds of the dimension of the array. Now we can rewrite our program by using the array processing method. Notice that the variables sbp1 to sbp6 are listed in the array statement. The if-then statement is enclosed in the iterative do loop. The loop iterates from 1 to 6, and the variable i serves as the index variable for the loop. During each iteration of the do loop, the, the array reference SPP array i refers to each array element. Instead of listing SPP1 to SPP6 individually, we can use the shorthand notation by inserting a hyphen between SPP1 and SPP6. We can also omit the array elements in the array statement since SPP1 to SPP6 variables were existed in the data step. Let's go over the compilation and execution phase of this program. During the compilation phase, the PDB is created. The array name, SBP array, and array references are not included in the PDB. Each variable SBP1 to SBP6 is referenced by the array reference. Syntax errors in the array statement will be detected during the compilation phase. At the beginning of the data step execution, underscore n underscore is initialized to 1. The rest of the variables are set to missing. The set statements copy the first observation to the PDV. The array statement is declarative statement. It doesn't execute during the execution phase. At the beginning of the do loop, the index variable i is set to 1. In the if then statement, the, uh, the array reference SPP array i is the same as SPP array 1, which refers to SPP 1 variable.
Since SPP1 does not equal to 999, there is no execution. SAS reaches the end of the do loop. At the beginning of the second iteration of the do loop, i is incremented to 2. Since 2 is less than or equals to 2, the loop continues. Since this is the second iteration of the do loop, the array reference SPP array i is the same as SPP array 2, which refers to SPP2 variable. Since SPP2 variable does not equal to 999, there is no execution. Now let's skip the rest of the iteration of the do loop. SAS reach, reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the contents from PDV to the output data. Then SAS returns to the next iteration of the data step. At the beginning of the second iteration of the data step, underscore n underscore is incremented to 2. SPP1 to SPP6 are retained because these variables are from the input data. The I variable is said to missing. The set statements copy the second observation from the input data to the PDB. I is incremented to 1 at the beginning of the do loop. In the if then statement, the array reference SPP array I is the same as SPP array 1, which refers to SPP1 variable. Since SPP1 equals to 999, SPP1 variable is assigned with the missing value. SAS reach, reaches the end of the do loop. Let's skip the, let's skip the rest of the iteration of the do loop. SAS reaches the end of the data step. The implicit output copies the contents from PDV to the output data set. Now let's skip the rest of the iterations. Hope you have the idea of array processing at this point. Next, let's talk about some useful array functions. Sometimes we won't know the dimension of an array. This tends to be the case when you used underscore numeric underscore underscore character underscore and underscore o underscore as array elements. A handy workaround is the dim function, which supplies the actual dimension to the data step. The optional n in the dim function is used to specify the, the dimension of an array. If the n value is not specified, the dim function will return the number of elements in the first dimension of the array. In the second format of the dim function, the bound n is either a numerical constant, variable, or SAS expression that is used to specify the dimension for which you want to know the number of element in the specific dimension. Closely related to the dim function are the h-bound and l-bound functions that return the upper and lower bounds of an array, respectively. Program 6.3 uses the dim function to return the number of elements in SBP array. Instead of using the dim function, you can also use the h-bound function to return the upper bound of SBP array, which is 6. Now let's see how to use the in operator. The data set on this slide is similar to the one that we used in the previous slide, except that this data set contains the data with the correct, num uh, with the correct numerical missing values. Suppose that we would like to create a variable called miss, which is used to indicate whether SPP1 to SPP6 contains missing values. This task can be easily accomplished by using the in operator. The in operator introduced in chapter 1 is used to determine whether a variable's value is among the list of character or numeric values. We can use the in operator to search for numeric or character values in an, as in an array. Program 6.4 illustrates the use of the in operator with SBP array to create the miss variable.
we can pass an array onto most functions with the off operator. Suppose that we would like to create two variables, SPP min and SPP max, that contain the minimum and maximum SPP values for each person. We can use the min and max function with the off operator to accomplish this task. Like in program 6.5, we must use an asterisk as the subscript within the function. Here's the printed output from the previous program. Now let's see some examples of using array processing. Suppose that the first three measurements of SBP in this dataset are recorded as pre-treatment measurement and the last three are recorded as post-treatment measurement. Furthermore, suppose that the average SPP values for the pretreatment measurements are 140 and that the average SPP is 120 for the measurements after the treatments. Based on this data set, we would like to create a list of variables above 1 to above 6 which indicate whether each measurement is above or below the average measurement. Here's the solution for solving this problem by using the array processing method. In this program, the first array statement is used to group the existing variables SPP1 to SPP6. Since SPP1 to SPP6 were existed in the input data, there is no need to specify these variables in the array statement. The second array statement creates six new data step variables above 1 to above 6. Since above 1 to above 6 variables do not exist in the data step, this array statement will create these variables. The third array statement creates temporary data elements that, that are used for comparison purpose. These array elements are initialized with six values. The first three values are the average SPP values for the pretreatment measurements. The last three values are the average SPP for the measurements after the treatments. The if-then statement within iterated do loop to compare each element in the SPP array with each element in the threshold array to assign value to the element in the above array. Let's see another example. Suppose we would like to calculate the product of a list of numeric variables. We can use array processing to accomplish this task by grouping numeric variables into an array. We need to make sure to treat missing value as one during the calculation. In the data step, we can start assigning the first element of the array to the result. Next, we need to create a loop to iterate from the second element to the last element of the array. Within the loop, we can multiply the result with each element of the array. Here's the program based on the idea that we just discussed. Transforming a data set with one observation per subject to multiple observations per subject or vice versa was introduced in chapter 3 and 4. The solutions in the previous chapters were not efficient if we have a large numbers of variables that need to be transposed. A more effective approach is to utilize array processing. For example, here's the program to transpose data set wide to data set long. Now let's see how to modify this program by using the array processing. First, we need to group the variable S1 to S3 into the array S. Therefore, in the program, instead of using variable names S1 to S3, we need to change them to array reference S of 1 to S of 3. Then the statements in these three blocks can be simplified by placing them within the iterative do loop by using the time variable as the index variable. Here's the modified version of the program by using the array processing. 
Now let's see how to transform data from the long format to the wide format. The program on this slide is the one that we learned in Chapter 4. Now let's modify this program by using the array processing method. Again, we need to group S1 to S3 into an array by using an array statement. Then we need to use the array reference S1 to S3 in the program instead of using S1 to S3 variable. When reading the first observation of each subject, that is when first our ID equals to 1, we can use an iterative do loop to initialize each element in the array to missing. Next, to modify multiple if then else statement, we need to understand the contents in the PDV at each iteration of the data step execution. For example, when SAS processes the first observation, the time variable equals to 1 at this point. When the if then else statement executes, S of 1 is assigned with a value from the score variable. S of 1 is equivalent to S of time by using time variable as the subscript in the array reference. When SAS processes the second observation, the time variable equals to 2 at this point. When the if then else statement executes, S of 2 is, is assigned with the value from the score variable. So S of 2 is equivalent to S of time also. Therefore, the multiple if then else statement can be rewritten as S of time equal score. Here's the final version of the code by using the array processing. This example will end this section. If you are interested in learning multi-dimensional array, you can read Chapter 6 of Handbook of SAS Data Step Programming. Thank you for your time for listening to this presentation. I would also like to thank the organizers of SAS Global Forum to provide me this opportunity to present this seminar. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.